Syracuse plays Louisville on Saturday. Find out what Owen and I want to see from the Orange in the home opener and the season opener. It's on Locked On Syracuse. It's right now. Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine with you on this wonderful Wednesday morning. We hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. We're free and we're available wherever you get your podcasts. Again, I'm Matt Bonaparte. That's Owen Valentine. We're talking Syracuse football. The first game of the week is in three days. I'm amped, Owen. Fired up. Let's go. Big day. Big game. And a big season for Syracuse. A lot on the line, a lot, you know, riding on this game, and there is a lot that we want to see. I'm so excited. I think I'm more excited for college football season and the NFL than I have uh, have ever been. I don't know if it's because I don't have to write papers on Sundays anymore or what, but I am pumped. So uh, feels let's right. get right into it, man. Yes, it does feel right. Fall is coming, and I couldn't be more excited about it. Uh, Syracuse plays a pretty tough opponent on Saturday in the Louisville Cardinals. Malik Cunningham and the Cardinals have just had their way with Syracuse in the last couple of seasons. It hasn't been pretty. Syracuse has been outscored 71-3 to in their last two outings. Last year, 41-3. to The year before, 30-zip. Both in Louisville, I might add. I don't know how much of a difference that really made, uh, but... Who knows? Now Syracuse gets him on the gridiron in the Loud House at home. Uh, I think that might make a difference. First game of the year will definitely make a difference because neither team is really going to have its footing. Because, as I always say, in week one of the college season or the NFL season, literally anybody can win. It doesn't matter. So, I don't know. We'll find out. But Syracuse looking to make an impact early. Alan and I are going to tell you at least three things that we want to see from Syracuse in this game, starting with 15 completions from Garrett Schrader. I want Garrett Schrader to go out there and at least complete 15 passes. That's probably one of the most, I think, kind of question marks that's flying under the radar a little bit. Obviously, everybody's talking about, can we trust the defensive line? What's the story there? But Is Garrett Schrader really going to be able to pass the ball? Like, we're all being kind of lulled into this sense of security that it's going to get better with Schrader. But I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I think his haters are definitely out there. Uh, But this new offense kind of built around him and him him and Sean Tucker, that is. Uh, So, theoretically, he should be able to, to be pretty good under it. 10 completions last year at Louisville. He was 10 for 18 for 46 yards through the air. That's terrible. Atrocious. So bad. So hopefully he can get something done this year. What do you think, Owen? I I think this is an attainable goal. I, I think this is feasible. It's not asking for him to, you know, walk away last season as Garrett Schrader and return this season as Tom Brady in his prime. Uh, it, it's not asking that. This is asking for him to make a reasonable improvement in the off season that is not, you know, thinking that this needs to be an outlandish jump, but just something that makes sense that, you know, exemplifies the steps that we've been hearing in terms of his improvement and, you know, the increased accuracy, the increased arm strength, the increased confidence, the better play calling, the better system. Completing 15 passes seems like a very reasonable goal that we're setting for Garrett Schrader here and something that I think, is a signal that if he hits that threshold, and I hope that you know he can surpass that threshold a little bit even, uh, I, I think that is a sign that, that it will be an improved passing Garrett Schrader. I don't necessarily think even if he hits 15 passes, it is all that indicative of too much just yet. Uh, but there are, as you were saying, this is a sort of a question that has flown under the radar for some. Yes, there's definitely people that are consistently asking about this, Uh, But for a lot of other people, uh, and maybe rightfully so, right, when you continue to hear 
how much better he's gotten and all the work that he's put in. You want to believe it as a Syracuse fan. You're grasping on things uh, and looking for those improvements. This is going to be a, a big game to see whether that comes to fruition. Uh, Louisville's defense is decent. I don't think they're incredible by any means. So when you look at ACC games where Schrader should be able to succeed throwing the ball, uh, I think you know this is one of those games that's going to be on the list just given – you know, the strength of the ACC this year, I definitely think he can hit 15 passes. And I think if he does hit that threshold, then, you know, I will, you know, boost the confidence a little bit in Garrett Schrader. I think we talked to Stephen Bailey last week and he said, you know, some of the passes look really good from Schrader, but there are still some balls that are are not perfect by any means. Uh, he said they're not throwing, you know, he's not throwing crazy passes where he's getting picked off left and right, but he's still not incredible by any sense of the imagination any stretch of that he is still improving he is still Garrett Schrader he is still a quarterback that we watch struggle to throw the ball but I think 15 passes shows that there is that increase in confidence that this offense might work a little bit better for him and that he has made some of the steps that have sort of been advertised in the offseason yeah and he's done it four times last year he had 15 against Wake Forest 16 against Virginia Tech and 17 each against Clemson and Pittsburgh. Only one of those games a win. Virginia Tech, funny enough, the only one of those four games that's on the road. He had that deep pass to Damian Alford to walk off the game. Uh, that's probably the best moment of his season. So Schrader, uh, we're hoping for 15 completions. And, and I think it's possible. But I guess, you know, it's also going to depend on what the offense looks like. And what their game plan is for this game in particular. How many times are they going to put the ball in Sean Tucker's hands? How are they? How creative are they going to get in terms of putting the ball in Sean Tucker's hands and things like that? Because that could end up leading to trader completions as well. We heard 100%. Bailey talking about those option routes uh, where the running back just kind of picks the route wherever the linebacker isn't, and maybe Schrader gets a couple of completions that way. But regardless – you're going to see Schrader throwing the ball to Sean Tucker, handing it off to him more times than not. And if I could jump in quick too, I, I think that this is, you know, yes, Garrett Schrader's name is on the lower third for those of you watching with us on YouTube, but this is also a stat that is very indicative of the new system that Robert and I has put in, uh, the new play calling, yeah. the new ideas that are in there. So yes, it's Garrett Schrader completes 15 passes, but that threshold is indicative of a lot more than how well Schrader throws the ball and how much better he's gotten, even if that was my initial point. These 15 passes say a lot about what this offense can be, uh, what a lot about the new system, some of the options, as you were saying. And and I, I think it does say that if they get to that 15 completions, that maybe there are enough options and enough things about this working that you're going to see some more, better results uh, if you're Syracuse. All right, let's take a quick break to tell you about Bet online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all of the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week's games. BetOnline is also your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine, sticking with you here on the Locked On Syracuse podcast this wonderful Wednesday. Uh, we move on here in the things we'd like to see from Syracuse in Saturday's game against Louisville, 8 p.m. in the Dome. Owen, I think you're going, right? I am probably 85% sure that I will be in the Dome on Saturday. Uh, okay, the maybe 15%. Turn flag down Owen and tell him his takes are bad. Um, yeah, please, call me out. <laughs> Look for the scruffly beard, uh, a little bit too much of a neck beard, uh, and call me out for whatever take that you hated the most in my three weeks since joining. <laughs> Uh, okay, next one on the docket, we'd like to see the O-line allow less than three sacks. Can they do it? Uh, I think so. 
we talked about the O-line a lot this preseason about how it's arguably the best one Syracuse has had since 2018. From left to right, they're a meaty bunch. Everybody's over 300 pounds, aside from Veterello at center, who's 292. Bergeron, uh, Kalan Ellis, Veterello, Dakota Davis, Chris Bleich. I mean, these guys are really good, and they're big, and they're strong. But, you know, we've had... We've seen so many problems with Syracuse's uh, ability to defend the quarterback. And some people say, and we talked about this in our Tommy DeVito episode, some say Dino Baber's offense can only do well with a mobile quarterback because the, the offensive line collapses and the quarterback has got to get out of that pocket. So can the offensive line allow two sacks or less? Owen, what say you? I. Uh- I don't know if they can. This is definitely one that is a little more optimistic for me and one that I want to see sort of build on, as you were saying, that the conversations we've been having surrounding the offensive line and the size, as you mentioned, and, you know, knock on wood, being relatively healthy going into the season and and having that sort of five-man span uh, where you've got size with Bergeron, Ellis, Veterello, Bleich, and Davis – where you sort of have that that size and that consistency and a little bit of versatility. And it seems like, you know, one of your most confident offensive lines, as you said, since 2018, and as we've said since 2018. Last year when Louisville played Syracuse, four sacks for 39 lost yards. And, yes, one of those sacks was an errant snap that goes over Schrader's head and Yasir Abdullah. Uh, comes in and just levels Schrader on top of it for probably a 20, 25-yard loss. But still, there were eight tackles for loss last season. This is just a sack stat. Uh, But in this Louisville game last year, there were eight tackles for loss, four sacks, and it wasn't by any means a Louisville defense that was really dominant and going to you know, tear teams apart limb from limb. Uh, It was a decent defense, but nothing crazy. And I think that's similar – to what they present this season. Uh, The Louisville defense has a lot of question marks, a lot of new transfers coming in. So they're going to have good players. Uh, You know, Yasir Abdullah is back. Uh, He had, what, 10 sacks last year. So he's going to be a presence, something that, you know, I'm I'm curious how the – Yeah, two of them last year. Curious how, you know, Syracuse handles him and his ability and his speed. Uh, But I think if Syracuse can allow two or fewer sacks, I would be okay – with that in this game. And I I think, you know, if ideally it's one sack or no sacks, but if they allow two sacks, you know, given the fact that there are some guys on this Louisville team that can rush you pretty well. And Abdullah is going to be the guy that you want to watch out for in that regard. Uh, But I I think it shows that this O-line is ready to battle this year and will be, you know, one of Syracuse's better assets this year offensively. Uh, if they can, you know, meet that threshold and have that, and I think it puts Syracuse in a position to be competitive, if that is the case, and and I think that's something that they need to do in this game is is be competitive. If you don't win, I, I think there are, you know, this is going into a little bit later in the week's discussion, but if you don't win, there are excusable losses on this table, and I think a win or a loss where you know you you were okay in keeping. Louisville out of your backfield and it's not eight tackles for loss and four sacks for loss of 39 40 yards if it's two sacks and a loss of you know 10 yards and you lose a close game I think I can find an excuse in there uh, as you move forward in this season but if you're looking at numbers and sack numbers and tackle for loss numbers and lost yards numbers that you saw last year that is where this number you know sort of is circled in my mind going into this game sure And like you said, four last year from the Cardinal defense. I think they should be able to do that. There's there's a better offensive line this season than there was last year. I mean, you could talk about having service last year compared to this year, but I think he was a little bit overhyped. Not saying he was bad, but people started to treat him like he was the greatest offensive line ever to touch a football field or offensive lineman. Um, And he just wasn't. So. Well, offensive line, certainly better. I think they should be able to fend off the Cardinals, who, aside from Yasir Abdullah, didn't have a crazy uh, attack last year in terms of sacks. No. The next best guy uh, at four. So it wasn't like they just had like some crazy defense. C.J. Avery had three, uh, and the rest is just kind of minimal. Um, okay, let's move on. 
can the Syracuse defense allow 28 or fewer points for touchdowns, in other words? Can they? That is a question. Uh, I, this is what I want to see. I, I want to see them you know, hold this Louisville team that has an incredibly explosive offense and you know, returns four of their five offensive linemen, and the one that they replace – is a really, really solid center in a, a Virginia Tech transfer uh, in Brian Hudson coming in to replace the center. They've got all ACC talent on that offensive line. It's a really, really good offensive line. There is a really, really good quarterback that we don't have to discuss right now in Malik Cunningham. Uh, they can run the ball. They've got, as uh, you know, they were said in, in press conferences this week, they've got four running backs that will be able to run at any point in time on top of the fact that Malik Cunningham is one of the most mobile quarterbacks that you will see this season almost anywhere in college football. The receivers, a little bit of a question mark, but this is an explosive Louisville offense and an offense that has had their way with Syracuse for a, a long time at this point, even when you know they have gone through their struggles and they were not great the last three-ish, three or four seasons by any means, and they still had your number. They were still putting up scores. We were talking before we hopped on, Malik Cunningham put up the most casual five touchdowns you'll ever see last season with 13 completions for 200 yards and four passing touchdowns and 24 yards on the ground, a net gain of 19 yards and one touchdown on the ground. This offense has lit you up for years, and I think if you can allow – 28 preferably fewer points in this game then you are permitting the offense a chance to stay competitive and a chance to win this football game i think the defense has a lot of big things to offer and i think this is a very very good test for syracuse in game one in the dome against a high quality opponent to say how good is this defense actually you see the names you see the returners you see how good this defense is supposed to be in tony white's year two uh, how good can it be, uh, and how good can they really go about doing this? And, and I, I think 28, I would be a little disappointed in if they hit exactly 28, but I do think Syracuse defense can allow less than that threshold in this game, and I think it is a really good sign if they do end up pulling that off. Absolutely. Um, I think it would be a great sign if they could do that. And this is something I'd really, really like to see. And we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. But I think it would mean a lot for the defense going forward. You know if, if they have a good defensive performance that when they get in that postgame press conference room, Dino's just going to go be like, I told you. What did I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I think that... You know, I think there are really good players on both sides of the ball. And you talk about Malik Cunningham. He's really darn good. I mean, that guy is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's a fantastic, fantastic athlete. Um, so, I mean, obviously he's a huge – and Dino talked about it in the, uh, the press conference leading up to the season this week. He said, like – or I think it was Bailey. Stephen Bailey asked, is there anybody you put at – quarterback to try and emulate him in any way and Dino just kept responding with we don't have anybody that that is as good in any facet of the game as that guy um I mean he was like do you put anybody there like he tries him yeah. no we don't we don't have anybody um so you know Malik is really he's that guy and I don't know if you saw the tweet today for that Emily Liker posted but it was a picture um of the tweet from Griffin Gonzalez from ACC from the ACC kickoff, uh, where Malik or excuse me, Michael Jones had said that they don't see Malik Cunningham and Louisville as a challenge. Now that wasn't the entire quote. I will say he like there's like the context just isn't there. Someone basically asked him like, "How do you feel about that challenge week one?" And he was like, "We don't see it as a challenge. We see it as an opportunity." to prove ourselves that we're this good or whatever, which I think is a really cool mindset to have going yeah. into week one. But, you know, obviously Twitter ran with Michael Jones I'm having sure. said that. And it's just a picture that I believe uh, Malik tweeted or something. And it's just that printed out on his wall. 
So he is using that as dartboard practice, and he is he wants to spear the Syracuse defense. Uh, so you know maybe he has a Lamar Jackson like uh, outing, and he just absolutely kills the SUD. But hey, I think that there's a really talented defense he's going to run up against. So yeah. there's that to think about as well. Uh, apologies, year three for Tony White. Misspoke there. I knew it the second it came out, but uh, I will adjust it before I get attacked. Uh, when you look at this team, though, and, and you look at the defense, and you look at you know how good they are, and I believe Vegas says Louisville at this point will score between thirty and thirty-one points if you you know do some math uh, with the total versus the spread. So I think twenty-eight points is less than what Vegas is asking or is what less than what Vegas is saying. And I think when you go less than that, it, it shows that this defense is legit and this defense can compete with one of the most difficult quarterbacks you can play against in Cunningham's ability to adjust on the fly and run and, and throw the ball. You know, I think his, his passing ability can sort of fly under the radar because of how mobile he is. And it's something that if Syracuse's defense, as I think they can, if they play a solid game in week one, it's something that I think they can do and will show the rest of the ACC, hey, this is, you know, we're, we're a legit defense. We are, we are here to challenge you. You are not going to, you know, come in here and just destroy us uh, like maybe has happened in years past. And as you said, 71 to three in the last two seasons against Louisville in terms of total score. I think this is a statement opportunity for the Syracuse defense as much as it is a statement game. And as we've discussed, possibly a must win game in week one in the dome uh, in front of what hopefully is a really, really solid crowd as well. I think it will be, too. I mean, Dino did say that the the incoming freshmen have crazy in their eyes. So uh, hopefully that's true as well. Okay, one more before we leave. The, the the last one, the thing that I really want to see is one of the new guys making a big difference this Saturday. And I'm talking about the newcomers. So whether that's Elijah Clark, Jeremiah Wilson, LaQuint Allen, somebody, Ronde Gatson, I'm still counting him even though he played a little bit last year. He's a newcomer in terms of position. I want to see one of the new guys just make a difference um, and not necessarily become a superstar week one, but just get on people's radars and say, okay, that's a guy we can have confidence in. And that's a guy we can trust. I just want to be able to root for a new player and actually have a guy that's new to Syracuse be something like, remember when Sean Tucker burst on the scene in 2020, after they started Jawar Jordan, by the way, this is the Jawar Jordan revenge game this week. He's on Louisville. Um, but remember when they started Jawar Jordan and like Marquenzie Pierre was the RB two and Sean was the RB three. And, Jawar is terrible in week one. So is Markenzie. They go to week two. Jawar's bad again. They say, okay, we'll take a chance on this Tucker kid. Uh, and he's just insane. And he just continues to be insane. And then last year, he's great as well. Um, so that was awesome. I'm not necessarily saying that's going to happen again, but I just want somebody to do something in that ballpark and just come out and make plays. I think Elijah Clark is probably the best candidate for it because he's a starter uh, and he's coming from another program and he's got a lot of gusto coming and he's wearing his, uh, awesome chain where he looks like such a King. There it is. You're so oh, high up on it. Elijah blah, Clark. Blah, blah, I love blah, blah. it. Bang. There it is. He's a baller. Um, yes, I am. Cause he's awesome. And I wanted to, and he's a great nickname. Cinco. That's a sick nickname. Um, yeah. so that's what I want. Yeah. You said, you know, when it comes down to Sean Tucker, the, the immediate one that I thought of was, Andre Cisco with the interception against Western Michigan week one, yeah. game one, uh, and then follows it up. You know, you said it doesn't need to develop into a superstar, but it sort of sets the precedent to be able to follow it up. And and that's exactly what Andre Cisco did. I think what he had two interceptions the next game, too. So he's got three interceptions in two weeks and really established himself almost immediately as uh, being that guy and having the capabilities to be that guy. And I think that's what we're looking to see out of a newcomer. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to, you know, have a seven interception season or uh, run for a thousand yards. Uh, but it just sort of means that, hey, this is not necessarily someone we entirely expected to be that kind of guy going into the season. And maybe they've 
started to gain that attention and gain that recognition in preseason camp. And then as the depth charts released, you see their name listed a little bit higher than you thought. And now it's time. They're on the field. They're getting the snaps. And you sort of see something big. Uh, my prediction, and I'm, I'm going to loophole it because you started to announce it as a loophole. I, I am so high on Aranda Gadsden right now. Uh, I am going to roll with him because I think this role that he will have uh, as this sort of flex tight end is going to be really, really cool and a really, really beneficial position for Syracuse and him. So I think this is where in game one, he comes out this season and says, yeah, I'm going to be getting the ball. I'm going to be doing a lot with it. And you are going to have to figure out ways to defend this moving forward because it is going to be that sort of thing. On the defensive side, uh, maybe Jatias Gear a little bit in terms of something that I would be, I'd be fired up if he comes out and has a great day uh, in that starting defensive end role on that D line where you've had so many questions. I would be really, really fired up to see him have a big day. Uh, and as you were saying, you know, he is your guy, Cinco. Let him have a big day. Uh, maybe he's the new guy that makes a big difference. But as you were saying, this is something that. You really, really want to see uh, when you've got, you know, yes, you've got 17 returners. You've got the most returners, what, in the ACC. And you you want to see, yes, we know these faces. We know what they can do. Uh, but you also want to see what these brand new faces can do uh, in game one with this amount that's on the line and the stakes of this game and the hype that's been building up this week about this game. It'd be really, really darn cool to see one of these guys come out and have an explosive week one and say, yeah, this is this is a new face that you're going to know real soon. Absolutely. All right. Well, that does it uh, for your Wednesday episode of Locked On Syracuse. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Go make your second listen. The Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022, an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into the ultimate NFL preview. Search for Ultimate Pro, or excuse me, Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. I'm a, I'm Matt Bonaparte. I almost said I'm Owen Valentine. I'm Matt Bonaparte. That's Owen Valentine. We will see you tomorrow. <laughs>